live? No, I don't live here. This is a storage unit. That would be weird. That's what would be weird? I'd like to spend more time here. However, I'm afraid some of my clients might follow me. Why would your clients follow you? You're an accountant. And that was a look at The Accountant, where Ben Affleck plays a forensic accountant who uncooks the books for illicit clients. The thriller hits theaters this weekend. Joining us for his review on this and other films opening this weekend is Richard Krause. Good morning, Richard. Nice, nice to, to see, see you. you. I really want to see this movie. What did you think of The well, Accountant? Well, I, I, I wasn't sure what to think about The Accountant because it doesn't really feel like a thriller. Okay. It's about accounting. By and large, you have Ben Affleck, who plays Christian Wolf if that's the only name he is. He's got a lot of aliases throughout. Uh, and by day, he's an accountant in a strip mall in a small town, and he helps yeah, farmers yeah. figure out their uh, taxes like and that sort of thing. By night, though, he works for some of the worst people on the planet, drug cartels and money launderers and arms dealers. When he gets involved with a robotics company, though, and uncovers an enormous amount of fraud, they send a hitman after him and the young researcher, played by Anna Kendrick, who helped uncover this fraud. Well, it turns out, though, that he has dual facilities with math and mayhem because he fights back, and oh. that's when it becomes a thriller. Okay. And it's also interesting to note that the character has autism, and so you have uh, someone who can't really relate to people he's uh, in... in uh, any real way. So you've got an interesting character for Ben Affleck to kind of navigate through this story. And uh, he does a good job. He's never been the most animated actor going. So to play a character who is shut down on some levels, uh, he's, he excels in this. And it's a pretty good thriller, even though it's kind of quiet. And even though there's a long scene near the end that they just explain everything. They just explain what's going on, and it takes forever. And I thought, oh, this is gonna stop the momentum of the movie completely. It doesn't. The really? movie flies by, so for me, it's four out of five stars. Wow, okay, on the list for sure this weekend. The next movie is American Honey. American Honey is a much different kind of movie. American Honey is the kind of movie that will make you uh, decide what kind of moviegoer you are. If you demand story and narrative, then probably American Honey is not for you. It's two hours and 40 minutes of a road trip starring this young woman, Sasha Disney's Lane, an, a new actor uh, who plays star so in the nice movie. She's from uh, a like troubled America. home. She's 18 years old, and she uh, gets out of town with a group of traveling door-to-door -door magazine salespeople. And along the way, there's a romance that happens. There are some close calls. Uh, she learns the business, and they drive around in cars and sing along with songs on the radio. Uh, if, if the slice of life thing works for you really, really well, then you'll probably enjoy the kind of more hypnotizing aspects of American Honey. If not, if you're like me and demand a little bit more story-wise, uh, it may not. It kind of felt to me like when you were a kid and banished to the back seat of the car while the adults were in the front having fun and you were sort of just watching the action and not really a part of it. Okay. So it's a two-star movie for me. This next movie, oh, okay, it's called Christine. Yeah. And you told me during TIFF that everybody knew how this movie ended. <laughs> and I said no. But maybe well, they it's, it, do. It, it is a based fact, on a true story. Yeah, it's based on a true story. It is part of the historical record that yep. in 1974, a reporter from Sarasota, Florida, named Christine Chubbuck, uh, committed suicide on the air. That is the, the culmination of this movie, but it's not the point of this movie. So you've got a, a, a young woman, played by Rebecca Hall, working in a newsroom uh, shortly after women were invited to work in the newsroom. And uh, it was also around the time when If It Bleeds, It Leads became a mantra for uh, news stations. And so she was having some trouble adapting to that. She wanted to do serious news stories and really sort of get under the skin of the stories that she was covering, but her program director was more demanding that he wanted something that had a little bit more sensationalism to it. So one day she went on the air and said, in keeping with our policy of giving you blood and guts, here is live coverage of an attempted suicide. And she pulled out a gun and pulled the trigger. And this movie could 
could have been a sensationalistic account of that one thing, which is why we know Christine Chubbuck. Instead, it digs a little deeper and it paints a portrait of a woman who was suffering from depression, a woman who was just trying to make her way in a world that was changing in a way that she didn't understand. And so for me, it's a three out of five star movie because it treats Christine Chubbuck with a great deal of respect without uh, okay. covering up any of the more unsavory parts of the story. And Rebecca Hall, as always, is terrific in this film. Okay, Christine, three stars. And the last film, we have a few seconds left, Unless. It's called Unless. This is Catherine Keener, who plays uh, a successful author. She lives in the suburbs with her uh, partner, who is a doctor. Their daughter decides to drop out of society and is spotted sitting on the streets of Toronto in front of uh, Honest Ed's with a sign that says goodness. And she's not saying a word. She is is completely mute. Uh, and the, the, the bulk of the film is spent trying to figure out how and why she ended up there and seeing the family kind of grapple with that. That's the good stuff here. When we finally find out what's exactly has driven her to this decision, the movie becomes a little less interesting. Oh. It's based on a Carol Shields novel. Carol Shields, the great Canadian novelist, yeah. her final novel, and a terrific performance from Catherine Keener in a movie, though, that uh, doesn't know quite where to keep its focus. The focus when it's on, this, uh, on the family uh, is great when it's on the young woman who's on the street telling her story becomes a little less so. So for me, it's a three out of five. Okay, Richard Krause, thank you so much. We'll thank see you, you next week. Absolutely.